is that that compromise forces God's hands of protection and provision off. If you continue to compromise, he wants to help you, he wants to bless you, but basically what we're doing is pushing him away. And so when his hands of protection and provision come off, that opens us up for the enemy to sneak in, not even sneak in, march in, and capture us. And so now they're captured and they're taken into exile and carried off and oppressed. And then what do they do? Lord, please, we're sorry, help us. They cry out. So compromise leads to being carried off and being oppressed, which leads to crying out. And so what God would do after they got to the point of repentance is raise up a leader. And that leader was called a judge. And that judge would come in and lead the people out of captivity back into communion with God and free them up. So Samson was a judge. And at the early part of his life, his mom and his dad, they were married for many years. And an angel of the Lord came to him and told him, hey, you're going to have a child. But we want this child to be set apart because he's going to serve God in a special way. And in the same way as Christians, each one of us have been called or set apart for God's special purpose. So let's look at the first few verses here. And for homework, just so you know, number six, write that down, Numbers chapter six, you can see as a Nazarite some of the vows that the Nazarite took and what that meant and being set apart. Basically, number one, there was no contact with dead things as a Nazarite. And in the same way as a Christian, we should consider the things or the people or the places that we hang out. Are they full of life or are they full of death? If they're full of death, we shouldn't be you know, associating necessarily with them on a regular basis. Second thing that the Nazarite was called to do, he was called to abstain from strong drink. In other words, he wasn't supposed to get his drink on and get drunk every weekend. Okay? In the same way, as a Christian, we're called not to be controlled by anything other than the Holy Spirit. Then the third thing that the Nazarite vow consisted of was he was not to have his hair cut at all. And that was just a visual reminder of their commitment visual sign of their devotion to God. They were set apart. They were something different. So in verse 1 it says, Now Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. So he went up and told his father and mother, saying, I have seen a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore, get her from me as a wife. Then his father and mother said to him, Is there no woman among the daughters of your brethren or among all my people that you must go and get a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. But his father and mother did not know that it was of the Lord, that he was seeking an occasion to move against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Now pause for a second. Right away, we see an issue. Right away, we see that Samson is hanging out in Timnah. Now Timnah, again, was a city that was occupied by the Philistines the enemy of the Israelites. He's hanging out in Timnah. He is sitting on the fence. He's sitting on the fence. And, <coughs> excuse me, he really has no business hanging out there. 
In 2 Corinthians 6, 14, it says, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have in darkness? Now, from time to time, yes, we do have to conduct business with the world. We do have to transact. But even though we're in the world, we're not of the world as new creations in Christ. And I want each one of you right now to think through what is Timna in my life? Where is that place that I'm hanging out more than I should be? Where is the place that's causing me to be exposed to things that are only going to tear me down, break down my walk with the Lord? What is Timna for you? Take a moment and write that down. Because I really want you to evaluate your life and be, be open and be willing for the Lord to reveal what that Timna is. Or well, that place again that only serves to provide for the fleshly desires that we have. You know, again, things could have played out a lot differently for Samson. Most of you know how the story ends. In the same way, it could have played out differently for Lenny. Now back to the second half of verse 5. Now to his surprise, a young lion came roaring against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And he tore the lion apart as one would have torn apart a young goat, though he had nothing in his hand. But he did not tell his father or his mother what he had done. Then he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. After some time, when he returned to get her, he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, a swarm of bees and honey were in the carcass of the lion. He took some of it, and his hands took some of it in his hands and went along eating. When he came to his father and mother, he gave some to them, and they also ate. But he did not tell them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. So his father went down to the woman, and Samson gave a feast there for, the, for young men used to do so. And it happened, when they saw him, that they brought 30 companions to be with him. Then Samson said to them, let me pose a little riddle to you. If you can correctly solve and explain it to me within seven days of the feast, then I will give you 30 linen garments and 30 changes of clothing. But if you cannot explain it to me, then you shall give me 30 garments and 30 changes of clothing. And they said to him, pose your riddle that we may hear it. So he said to them, out of the eater, came something to eat, and out of the strong came something sweet. Now for three days, they could, they could not explain the real. Now we can clearly see here, pause, let me have your attention. We can clearly see here that Samson was in straight up flesh mode. He was caught up, he was smitten by the beauty of this young lady. And you know, girls can have that effect on guys, and vice versa. We can do some silly things for someone of the opposite sex. But in verse 8 and 9, he took honey from a dead carcass of a lion he had killed earlier. Now, remember those Nazarite vows? Number one, he wasn't supposed to have any connection with anything dead. Wasn't supposed to. So that's strike one, because he knew that touching a dead lion would violate, violate his Nazarite vow. Number two occurs in verse 10. It says, you know, when Samson gave a feast, according to biblical scholars, that included a considerable amount of alcohol. It was a straight up party. And, uh, you know, again, drinking was a violation. They were not supposed to give themselves a strong drink. So far, Samson is not the best example of a leader. But we can still learn from him. 
we can still learn from some of his mistakes. I think, like Sam.